Hello, sixth grade science teachers. Welcome to a lab video. This might be your first one. It is the first one in your um, sequence of lessons, not the first one I filmed, um, but let's go ahead and get started. This is actually one of the first um, simulations. Let me minimize our window here. Sorry, here we go. So when we're in our curriculum map, you'll see that the first lab listed activity eight. Anytime that you have an activity or lab that doesn't have the highlighted, this requires advanced preparation, is probably a simulation. So you guys in sixth grade don't actually get your first hands-on lab down until activity eight. And that's using the microscope. So plan ahead. If you need a microscope, I've tried to give out as much as I could. I still got some more to give away. Let me know and I can get you more. Just go ahead and open this up. This takes you right to the activity. Um, you could also get there navigating through Discovery Ed, Concept 1.1, Explore, Activity 8. That is why I like the curriculum map. It takes me right to where I need to go. You'll see the teacher instructions there at the beginning, and then you got the simulation here, along with the teacher's guide and a student guide. These would be your main two that you'd want to do the lesson for. The STEM Connect is for a different activity and a different grade level possibly, where students do a STEM project with this. You can look at it and see if that's something there that's useful for you, um, but your main thing is the student guide and the teacher's guide. Um, you can assign this online for students and they'll have three questions here. Those are the exact same questions in the student guide. Let's go ahead and look at that real quick and then we'll open up the simulation. So the student guide is one pager, which is really nice. Sorry for the bells going off. But you see they have three different questions that they'll have to answer as they go through the exploration. It gives them information on how to use it and then some spots just to write down some information. You could prompt them on what they should be putting here. Maybe you put a question on the board that at the end they need to summarize their learning or something like that. I kind of like this lab because you could do this as either assigning it for students to do on their own at the end of the day everyone's doing it together, or you just have it on the board and as a class, they're going to help you piece it together and you can kind of facilitate that learning all as a class. When you're doing this, this goes into way more details about the nervous system than you need to know, the students will need to know in terms of testing, like they don't need to know the different parts of the brain, but it does help them sort out that the nervous system is broken down into two systems. You got your brain a spinal cord, but both those systems interacting together is what helps us um, function. So you can still bring in that conversation of systems and connection. So uh, all this lab does is you grab these guys and you are dragging them into the correct part of the brain. Um, so when you get it correct, it gives you a good job, re-highlights, hey, this goes to this part of the brain, and then it gives you a little bit of information about uh, that part of the brain. And so it's useful for, look, at this is sight, touch, taste, smell. Now I have a bit more information to help with the other ones, but also I'm learning. Again, this is going to way more detail than the students really need, but if we're teaching above what they need, that's okay. Some students will remember these things um, and they're going to have a better grasp of things. So speaking, that fell into that as well. Um, so anything where it's like your senses or voluntary, um, things like that, I think hearing would be the last one. Oh. Wrong spot up here. It does correct you, as you saw, um, where I put in the wrong spot. It just says that's incorrect, kicks it back. So it doesn't really punish students for getting any of these things wrong. Let's see here. I believe that goes there. So what's really nice is as students are learning and completing this, sorry, that goes here, um, then it finalizes all that learning with a nice little summary. Let's finish this up. So they've did, done the different parts of the brain. Okay, now you've uncovered this like little video. So this is the part where now it kind of moves through the text a bit fast. So this part might be good to play out in front of the class and you read it so that way they can keep up with the animation. But it kind of summarizes like, here's how the brain is controlling things, it's sending out signals to the body. And you see the text here will change and it kind of goes quickly. You can hit stop and it will stop, but you can't really hit play afterwards. Um, I don't like that part of the simulation, but um, you can always replay if the students need to. And so it kind of summarizes the learning. So again, 
how you implement this in your classroom. It could be as a whole class, individual. It could be differentiated for the students who really got it. Hey, you guys go do this so I can work with my students who are lagging and get caught up. So kind of a few thoughts there. Okay, uh, before I keep rambling on, we'll keep this one short. That is activity eight, a pretty good one. Very easy, interactive. Um, hopefully you guys found this video useful and you feel confident in implementing this in your classroom. I'll catch you guys in the next video.